Hi, welcome back to Tera Querida. Today is the start of our cruise series. If this is your first time planning a cruise by yourself and you're not sure where to start, I recommend you keep on watching. I have 15 tips for you that will hopefully help you along your uh, travel journey and figure out where you want to cruise. Um, this one specifically will be about Norwegian cruise lines, so if you're interested, keep on watching. <music> Okay, so the first tip that I have for you is to make sure you are researching all, and I mean all, of your ports. You want to make sure that at least, you know, if you're doing seven ports, six out of seven ports, you're really interested in doing a lot of different things and that there's not just one thing that you want to do because these ports, you know, you're going somewhere completely new so you want to make sure you have something that you're interested in um, and you're not just sitting on the cruise ship for the majority of your time. I encourage you to use all social media platforms and video platforms like YouTube to research a lot of these cruise ports. There may be things that a local might upload and talk about or you know a fellow cruiser that has done the same cruise that you're interested in has done and you know you may realize that maybe this cruise um, isn't for you or uh, you want to do um, some things but you're not interested in doing all of them. So research, research, and research. When you're booking with Norwegian Cruise Lines, they oftentimes have a lot of uh, freebies, so free at sea. Those include um, drink package, internet, and some other things. Uh, oftentimes, too, they will do a buy one, get one for your airline uh, ticket, which will be added to your uh, cruise package versus buying a uh, separate uh, airline ticket for you and whoever you're cruising with. One thing I want to make sure that you do know when it comes to the alcoholic drink package is that gratuities are not included. So you will have to pay those at a later time, um, either before your cruise or once your cruise ends. On embarkation day or your first day at sea, you want to check out the entire cruise from top to bottom. Um, you know, of course, where there's stuff for you to explore um, because there's a lot of things, especially the bare cruise ships, there's so much to do and you want to make sure you don't miss out on anything and you find things that you're interested in doing, um, especially if you find that one of the ports does not appeal to you whatsoever. You, you want to have things to do um, while you are on this cruise ship. All right, before I give you more tips, I want to remind you to subscribe. It's My channel is still small, so I want to continue growing and reaching more people and provide as much information I can about hiking, cruising, and whatever else that might come and throw at you. My first cruise, which was this cruise that I'll be doing this series on, was a seven-day cruise, and I found it to be the perfect length for a first-time cruise because I was able to have enough time to explore around the ship and also explore these ports and I did um, find one cruise port that wasn't too appealing so I went back to the ship a little bit earlier than um, we hoped but that's quite alright because again we had already explored some of the things around the ship or just checked out what was there and we were able to uh, do a couple things uh, which I'll talk about later in a future video. I found that the Norwegian speakers are not super loud, which is good because you don't want them to be super loud and obnoxious to where you can hear them in your room. Um, but just keep an eye out for the safety drill or I guess listen out for the safety drill date and time. And where you need to go will depend on where you are in the ship, like where your room is. So if you're not too sure, make sure you contact one of the staff members or ask your room steward. They may know. Um, just make sure you get that done. If you don't get it done when it's pre-scheduled, you'll get a letter in your left in your room and they will kindly ask you to make sure you show up for the um, drill. One thing I do uh, wish I would have done was to take a picture of my passport. I didn't really quite feel safe taking my passport with me while I'm out exploring, especially because I would put my bag down in places and whatnot. But anywho, take a picture of your passport. If you're doing a bigger purchase, um, you can get a tax rebate and you know you can present that at customs when you get back to the States and um, see if they'll allow you to process it. In my experience, I got the paperwork. Um, I didn't have my passport, but they were kind enough to let me, you know, get all the paperwork. But I, once I got to the customs, um, they didn't find there it was enough. Um, so they just pushed me through and our plane was running late. So 
is kind of, uh, you may or may not get that tax rebate, but it's still um, good to know to take a picture of your passport. If you get a free specialty dining, or if you do uh, want to check out some of these specialty dinings like churrascarias or um, any other of the specialty dining restaurants, you want to make sure that you are booking or making a reservation ahead of time or at your first day at sea or embarkation day because especially on the shorter cruises, they tend to book out pretty quickly. And if there's a restaurant that you really, really want to try, make sure you are making that reservation. Cruise tip number 10 is to make sure you are paying close attention to the daily cruise planner because it gives you everything in detail from when your cruise ship ports to when it leaves and everything in between, things that they do throughout the um, time that the cruise is at that port. Sometimes they'll have games, live music, um, other things and events going on. So if you're not interested in going and getting off to the port, which I still recommend, even if you're not interested, just get off for a little bit, explore, and then grab a bite from the local cuisine, go back to the ship and you're good to go. But yeah, pay attention to that. A uh, part two on number two, or really tip number 11, is that if the port is a tenor port, you will have to get in line to go on this like smaller boat. Um, and then that will take you to the port itself. And then um, when you come back to get ready to get back on the ship, you'll wait again in line and get on the little ship and then they'll take you in to the cruise ship. You want to make sure that you have plenty of time to get on this um, tender port because the lines do get long and you don't want to be late and um, miss your cruise. Tip number 12, if you just do a regular size luggage and you check that into your plane and that's all you're carrying, I encourage you to bring a backpack with you or a small duffel bag with an extra pair of clothes and um, other little basic necessities, especially important documents as well as important uh, medication that you need because there are two things that can happen. We actually met a couple that um, checked in their bag and the airline lost their luggage so they were on this cruise ship already in the middle of the freaking ocean without any of their clothes and they just had to kind of rough it for a little bit. Um, so you want to avoid having that happen to you if all possible. And then the second thing is that can happen is that you have some uh, things you shouldn't have on your luggage such as a uh, steam iron thing or um, alcohol, um, like liquor, you're not supposed to take that in. I guess that's a bonus tip. Um, make sure you're not bringing that with you in your luggage because they will be held and then they'll take longer to bring it to your room. So again, make sure you have a backpack with some basic necessities and of course your essentials. One thing I did learn, uh, which you probably won't find online, was um, that sometimes the staff is able to get off during these cruises. So you want to bring some cash. Um, you know, if you come across a staff member, especially your room steward, they're able to go out and explore um, on their time off. So you want to, you know, help them out a little bit, make sure they have some of the currency from where you're um, going to port at. Second to last tip that I will give you is to make sure you are printing out a copy of your itinerary, um, your cruise information, and any other important documents that you will need. Remember your phone can die and with technology you just never know. So I like to have a paper copy just in case I need anything um, while I'm there or what have you. If you're able to buy your plane ticket separately from what Norwegian offers, I encourage you to do that because then you can arrive at the port a day earlier at least um, to help you adjust with the time difference and also another great thing is you're able to explore the town um, we flew into Athens which is where the cruise was leaving from and you know we we're able to go and explore and I'll talk about that in another video um, but yeah it was great I you know explored a little bit that day when we arrived um, went back to our Airbnb and passed out and didn't wake up until like the next day essentially, but it was, it 
worked right because it was my first time going to Europe so I needed a little bit of a wiggle room to adjust to the time difference. Alrighty, thanks for watching. I hope I see you on the next video all about cruising. If you're interested, uh, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment with any questions or any additional tips for other first time cruisers and I hope I see you on the next one. Bye!